Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a review on the NZX CT120 RGB cooler. It is an air cooler. It's relatively new. It came out in October 2022. I'm interested to see how it stacks up to my Kraken X53, which is a dual fan water cooler. I will be throwing it in the NZX CH5 Elite case. It'll be cooling my i5-13600K and be paired with an RTX 4080. Benchmark stress test and some gaming. It should be pretty sickle mode. <laughs> So the specs for this cooler, when the fans are at max speed, it says it can reach 1800 RPM with the airflow at about 50 CFM. You ask what CFM is? CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. It is the airflow measurement used when describing how much air a fan or computer case can distribute. Typically more CFM equals better cooling and better performance. So how does this stack up to some of the best fans if you're comparing it to like a Natua fan? According to this website, the Natua NFS 12B is the 120 millimeter fan that they rate the best. It has a listed CFM of 59.2, which is nine CFM higher than the NZXT fan that's in this box. If you compare the noise, the Nato fan is only at 18 decibels versus the NZXT when it's at its max speed. You're looking at 27 and a half decibels. I wouldn't say it's a super quiet fan, but it's not the worst, it's not the best. Now this cooler is listed at $60, and actually, if you look at Best Buy's website, it's around $52. This isn't a high-end cooler, it's $50, $60 cooler. You can pay upwards to $300 for some of these water coolers. Now, if you do a custom loop water cool system, expect to spend way more than that. So a $60 cooler isn't high end. I would say it's kind of lower end, especially now that CPUs use a lot of power. The i5-13600K can push 189 watts. That's a lot of power. A lot of times these air coolers aren't designed to handle CPUs with that much power. In the box, you get the manual, You'll get brackets for AMD with the screws and the spacers. It looks like an RGB header extension. You'll get this cute little tube of NZXT thermal paste. This is just another back plate for different Intel processors. You'll also get an extra set of these, I uh, don't know what to call them. It's not coming to me right now. These little metal thingies. We'll just call them that for now. So that you can use this cooler in a two fan configuration. In theory, it should give you better airflow so that you can get the heat away from the heat sink. I may try that just to see if I get better temps or if I get better performance. It's just nice that they include that just in case you wanted to do that two fan configuration. But yeah, that's what comes in the box. If you look at the cooler in the NZXT H5 Elite case, it actually goes really well. It matches the other RGB fans that came with the case really nice. It is a nice and sleek design. I think it looks good for just a standard air cooler. I have seen really ugly air coolers, which makes me kind of not a fan of air coolers. I will say this is one of my favorite looking air coolers because it, it looks sleek, kind of minimalistic. Yeah, at least if you have an NZXT case, it goes well with your case. So the first test I ran was a Cinebench test and when it's running, not sure if you could hear it. You can definitely hear the fans kick on. And I did Cinebench with the Kraken, with the T120, and then the T120 with the dual fan configuration. I didn't experience any thermal throttle. I was pushing 189 watts all three times during the test. So when you're comparing the temps, the T120 single fan configuration, max temp was 86 degrees. Surprisingly, with the dual fan configuration, I got 86 degrees as well. With the Kraken, I got a cool 80 degrees compared to the air cooler. Now, as far as scores go, I got 24,022 with the Kraken. Single fan configuration was 24,112. Dual fan was 24,028. So I got the highest score with the single fan configuration. I don't really think that means much. I don't think you're gonna get better performance with either fan you go. I would say they, they pretty much scored the same. Now with the Kraken, the Kraken. My max temp was 80 degrees. Even though the performance was the same, the Kraken is keeping the processor cooler, which I expected. It's a water cooler and it has a dual fan radiator. So it's nothing that I didn't expect. All right, now moving on to the Fermark test. The Fermark test that I do is a, just a 10 minute stress test. I run the CPU stress test as well as the GPU stress test. When I just do the CPU stress test, my temps stay relatively cool, low 80s on all the tests. I think with the water cooler, it was the high 70s. Now, when you add the GPU stress test at the same time, that's when you start to see temps go up. So I'm putting 100% load on both GPU and CPU at the same time. With a T120 single fan configuration, my temp reached 89 degrees Celsius. Dual fan, I hit 86 degrees. The Kraken, I hit 86 degrees as well. 89 degrees is not really where you wanna be. 
Like I said in my past videos, most of the time you're not using 100% of your GPU and your CPU at the same exact time. So more than likely you won't be hitting these temps unless you're really, unless you're doing stress tests like this. So with the 3D Mark test, I ran Time Spy as well as Firestrike Extreme. With Firestrike Extreme, I surprisingly got the best score with the dual fan setup. I got a score of 31,114. Single fan setup was 31,069. And the Kraken, I got 30,389. Interesting because my water cooler got the worst score. Not by much. When you look at the physics test, for some reason, it also got the worst score, which is the CPU test that it does during Firestrike Extreme. My temp though was the coolest. It was 62 degrees versus 66 and 67 degrees during the test. And it's not a long test, it's like a three or four minute test. So it doesn't have a lot of time to heat up. But according to the test, you get a slight performance increase with the air cooler. I don't know why. Now, if you look at the combined FPS, I got eight FPS better with the dual fan configuration. Not too sure why, not too sure why, but it is what it is. Slightly better performance with a dual fan setup. Not much over the single fan setup, but better temps with the water cooler. Now, when you look at Time Spy, if you're comparing the single fan and the dual fan setup, it's honestly neck and neck, not really a big difference. The only difference that I really saw was you get two degrees lower on the dual fan setup. It didn't really equal better performance because with the dual fan setup, I got 25,420 versus 25,441. Now this is a heavier CPU benchmark test. That's why the temps are a little higher, but 73, 75 degrees um, is not, not anything to be concerned. And moving on to the shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark as well as the Cyberpunk benchmark. So all across the board, it was pretty much the same. 234 frames per second average for both the Kraken and the single fan configuration. With the dual fan, I got 235 frames per second. One frame per second can increase. You will not be able to see that with the naked eye. Cyberpunk, for some reason, my Kraken scored the lowest again. I got 91.88 frame per second average. The T120 single fan got 95.85. The dual fan got 95.71. On either of the benchmarks, it did not exceed 60 degrees Celsius on either of the tests. The Kraken did stay a little cooler at 57 degrees Celsius. Now, when I gamed with GTA 5, my max temp of the CPU was actually 63 degrees with the Kraken. I did not see the air coolers exceed 60 degrees while playing. Played about 30 minutes. I have max settings turned on. I couldn't see a difference in the gameplay. They all look the same. So right now I have the T120 in a uh, two fan configuration. So far my gameplay is pretty smooth. I'm fluctuating between 70 and 80 FPS. My temps are in the 50s right now. It's like 58, yeah, 58 degrees. For the most part while gaming, I don't see a difference between the one fan configuration or even my crack. Let's see. Because uh, all three different coolers, it's a pretty pleasant experience. You know, I'm enjoying it. my attempts. Oh, I just hit 60. That was the first time I saw it hit 60. Why is he running away? He didn't have any money. What? Yeah, in the single fan configuration, the temps are pretty nice and comfortable. FPS is very similar to the dual fan configuration. It's honestly just like the dual fan. Uh, it's a definitely a pleasant experience. Very surprised that an air cooler with one fan is keeping this processor in the 50s. But yeah, just a very peaceful experience. I'm glad I have that peace of mind that my processor is not going to be uh, is not going to be a problem. It's not going to be heating up, thermal throttling. It should help improve the longevity of my processor. So I guess after all the tests and after all the benchmarks, 
what does this actually mean? How does the NZXT120 air cooler stack up against a water cooler. Now the i5 is a gaming processor. Nowadays you kind of can use it as a workstation processor if you need to do video editing, if you need to do 3D rendering. The i5 can actually handle some of that. So if that's your focus, if you are going to be pushing the CPU to its limits, a water cooler over time will keep your processor running cooler and may prolong the life of your CPU. You will not see a performance decrease by going with an air cooler. I just think you may shorten the lifespan of your processor if you are pushing it to its limits and using an air cooler. Now as far as gaming goes and the gaming benchmarks, really there wasn't a big difference now during Fire Strikes as far as the Kraken and the either single fan or dual fan configuration. There's only a four degree difference and while I was gaming with GTA 5, <laughs> this for some reason actually gave me a better temp. So overall, 0% decrease in performance when I went with this air cooler. Actually, this cooler did surprise me. I actually thought that I was gonna be getting thermal throttle. I thought I was gonna be pushing over 90 degrees, which I didn't. 89 was my max temp during the Fermark test. So overall, I'm pleasantly surprised that this cooler was able to compete with the Kraken X53. It's way cheaper. The Kraken's like 120 something dollars. This is $60. So about half the price, and you do not get half the performance. Now, in my opinion, I do think the Kraken looks better. Like I said, over time, if you're doing heavy CPU workloads, the Kraken will probably be the better bet. If you care about the longevity of your processor, just because it's keeping it several degrees cooler under those heavy CPU workloads. As far as gaming goes, it doesn't really matter which one you go with. I don't think you'll have an issue with longevity or performance with either the air cooler and the Kraken. I don't think it's necessary to go with the dual fan configuration. It was very minimal performance difference when you went with the dual fan. I would just stick with the single fan. But overall, I was very impressed with the performance I get from a $60 air cooler that NZXT has made. In my opinion, probably my favorite looking air cooler. Not very bulky. I actually did test it with my 12900K. During my CPU stress test, I was pushing 91, 92 degrees Celsius. This cooler is not designed to be cooling i9s. If you want an i9, I've said it in the past, you want a triple fan radiator, something like that, if you want maximum performance. Typically, i9 users buy those processors because they are gonna be doing heavy CPU workloads. An i9 versus an i5 doesn't give you much of an increase when it comes to gaming performance. If you're going with an i5, I would even say most i7s, you'll be perfectly fine with this. If you're on a budget, if you want something that looks clean, if you don't care for RGB, you can save 10 bucks and get the fan that doesn't have RGB. It works with all socket types, Intel and AMD. That was a short review for the NZXT T120 RGB. I think for 60 bucks, it's definitely worth it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. I will be testing the new H9 Elite case. It looks pretty cool. Reminds me of a Lean Elite case. I'll be doing a thorough review on that. I'll be talking about it. And hope you have a sick mode day.